I decided to do a guided imagery and later on you have the chance to exchange with others what came to your mind in this guided imagery. I don't know how much experience you have with guided imagery. Do you have? But hopefully it's something that relaxes you and gives you a ch- <laughs> an opportunity <clears throat> to listen and to watch pictures inside your own bubble. <laughs> and I will offer you some stimulation what kind of pictures you can come up with. But certainly it's your reality, as we all know, that you can dialogue with. I can try to uh, formulate some invitations. I certainly should first do a formal trans introduction. Unfortunately, I'm not Milton Erickson, because when Milton Erickson started to talk, he had a kind of voice that draw everybody automatically into a deep trance. <laughs> <laughs> and he also said humor is a good way to go into a trance. <laughs> When I started to do trance work, I thought I should be very careful not to disturb people on their way into a trance. But today I know you you can do everything and invite people. And if they laugh in between and feel disturbed or just hear or see something disturbing, it's even a deepening technique. So, no reason to be to worry somehow because each of you might find a interesting experience when I invite you into relaxing and find your own movie inside your reality bubble and everybody has his or her own strategies to go into this inner uh, um, awareness. One is more feeling into the body and has experiencing in sitting comfortably, breathing a bit, and using this as a gateway into internal orientation. And it might help you to remember how you feel when you're in a warm bathtub or today when it's tropical outside in a cool <laughs> bathtub or after a long hot day when it, the sky is getting dark and it starts to rain and these big cool drops go down on the roof and makes this very specific noise. Or everybody has its own preferences. You might be on a beach and lie in the sand and it's a wonderful warm wind stroking your body. And you hear the waves coming and going. And if it's very early in your holidays, you might not yet be totally ready to relax. But that's okay too. So waves don't mind. And you might smell the salty air And here are the noises that are typically to be listened at a beach and lying there you might be aware that there are some birds in the blue sky and they do not think about how they fly. They just do. And the winds lifting them up, 
helping them to have a good overview and to move very easily in whatever direction they want to move. Might not be strenuous at all. Others love to sit at a, a stream, looking on the surface, and the sun is dancing, mirrored on the surface of the water. And they hear the typical sounds and the smell of fresh grass, maybe the sound of birds singing. Or other situations in your life you like to look for where you have good had have had good experiences since being there and letting images, ideas, feelings, moods coming up, come and go. Nothing to be fixed. More a floating thing. Also, you might control a lot. There's also a floating sphere in all your life. And while you are consciously maybe listening, for example, to a lecture, the background of your personality is there are situations in your life, tendencies, that are touched and float. And you might have some pictures there from which you only grasp a bit. Many of those you don't grasp. You might be interested to be in contact with your pictures. It's good to have a safe place. And it's good to be open to any inspiring pictures that are stimulated. It's good to be touched, but not too close. It's also good to be apart, to hear a scroll out there, to be a part that is outside and watches you while you are involved in your experiences. And I wanted to invite you to follow through some pictures that I will offer you. You can do that in a relaxed way. You don't have to follow very closely and very strictly. It's okay to be around, to listen what I'm inviting you to and find your own ways to deal with my invitations. It's like a group of tourists on a castle, for example. There is a leader who explains them and shows them and points to things. And everybody is free to be around, not to get lost from the group, but to look at this edge and corner or the other one and have his own experience, her own experience here that is meaningful to you. And what I want to invite you to is to deal with experiences and pictures in terms of theater metaphor. (coughs) 
You can imagine your life and all the situations in life as if there were stages. And when you remember, then right now it's as if for a moment the curtain opens and you share the play on this stage and you share it as long as you want and the state this play might go on but the curtain might close again and you can understand all the situations and locations in your life as being stages and somebody could ask you what are the stages you prefer to be on? And you don't have to think of an answer. You just can come up with memories of situations. Maybe not every stage is the one you think you have chosen. You are just drawn on stages and into place, plates here. Maybe you never decided really to play in that play and to be on that stage. But maybe a child is coming along and asking you, what are the stages you spend your life on? What are the typical plays you are involved in? How come you are on these stages? How come you play in these plays? Who wanted that to happen? What did you, what do you hope to gain there? Did it work? Does it fit for you? Maybe you like a stage or like a play. Do you like your role? Is this the right role in the play? What are the kind of roles you spend your life in? Which roles do you choose yourself? And are your choices good? Which roles are requested by others? Do they give you what you want to have in life? Sometimes life is a question of style. Some people do the right thing in the right role, on the right stage, in the right play. But they do not adopt the right style. Maybe in her, their essence they are 
simple people and somehow every place so clamorous or the like the big intensive important place but they don't dare to do that Instead, they take the small, modest, quiet place, the style. Is it a more emotional style or is it more intellectual style? A greedy style, a sensible style? How would you describe your typical styles in life in which you spend your time? And one day when you look back on your life Was it chosen good, the styles in which you lived your life? Did you adapt to imaginations what the good styles are from others? you invite others into your style? Do the styles match between close people in your life and yourself? And if they don't match so much, what? how do you handle the situation? And there is another question. What are the typical topics in your life? Contents you have been interested in very much? You have been passionate about or forced to So if you take some distance to the place in your life and you think about stages, roads, topics, place, performing styles or styles of just being. From which perspectives you think it's this and that is just the way I wanted to have it. And where do you feel or think it could be changed or have done something additional to make your life more appropriate to your essence, to what you can be. You don't have to change anything. It's okay just to meditate about things.
so that you can share. Nothing is perfect. But sometimes it's easy to change something. You haven't been aware of the need to change something. Sometimes the price is high and there might be scare or you're not sure why you keep something or why you want to change something. That's life too. Many questions. You might have had impressions of the one or the other kind while I was talking. And it's okay to keep those in mind while you slowly go back into everyday outside orientation. And everybody has his own, her own style to find a way back. Not totally. It's okay to be in good contact with the sphere you have been visiting while I was talking. And you don't have to share everything with others. But it might be worthful just to tell them a bit of what happened while you have been oriented to your inner world and your life and might have been stimulated by this theater metaphor. There's still some time left. You can organize your waking up, bringing with you what you want to share and or not to share, but just be aware of consciously. And you hear from the raising my voice. This is analog marking, as you know, as professional that I really mean it to invite you back into outside reality. And almost everybody already has opened his or her eyes. Stars are different. Some get up the latest they can. That's okay too. Time to come back, also for the last mail. <coughs> it's okay to feel comfortable with the way you did it. Everybody has his her own reality. I'm not doing trance, you are doing trance. I just give you the frame. Those of you who need to move a bit to be solidly regrounded in, reali in outside reality should do that. And then look around and look for two others. And just share a bit. No mutual consulting work, nothing. Just telling a bit, sharing a bit.